We have some breaking news to report out of Pittsburgh. A bridge collapses, injuring nearly a dozen people. A strange coincidence, as this happened just hours before President Biden visits there to discuss infrastructure. Officers under fire, a suspect wildly shooting at police in broad daylight, two separate car ja a chases, a carjacking, a standoff. The suspect now in custody. Uh, we're live with the president of the Houston Police Officers Union as the story unfolds. Blizzard warning, we're tracking the impacts of a major winter system, a nor'easter this weekend, a bomb cyclone, winter storm alerts are in effect from North Carolina to Maine, up to two feet of snow in some parts. Your national forecast is coming up. And ahead of this year's Super Bowl, Janet Jackson is speaking out about that infamous wardrobe malfunction from 2004's Super Bowl. The stylist who designed that faded bustier speaking with News Nation. Morning in America starts right now. Okay, this was one of the best songs of my childhood. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I didn't know what an escapade was, but I, I like the beat. All of a sudden, the shoulders start moving. Now. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Rhythm Nation. Oh, my gosh. Like, you could just go back in time and just chart your favorite Janet Jackson songs. I know that we're going to be speaking to this designer. Really, Janet's not said a lot. Janet has not said a lot. I think a lot of us are looking forward to this documentary this evening because it will hopefully shed a lot of things on the family, that wardrobe malfunction, and what her life has been like since she's become a mom. Yeah, there are a lot of little connections to mm -hmm. that one moment in time back at the uh, 2004 Super Bowl and the uh, time on stage with Justin Timberlake. Uh, but let's get to our news for this morning. First of all, good morning to you. Thanks for joining us here on Morning in America. We start with the assault on police officers this week. Around the nation, police were ambushed or murdered and shot at in cities all across the country. Uh, the latest shooting involved a brazen suspect, two car chases, a standoff that ended with three police officers wounded. This all happened in Houston. The suspect is now in custody. Following that confrontation, the violence unfolding during a very difficult week for law enforcement, to say the least. In Houston, the city has been mourning the death of Corporal Charles Galloway, who was gunned down by the driver of a car during a routine traffic stop that happened just on Sunday. In New York City, officers Wilbert Mora and Jason Rivera were murdered while responding to a domestic disturbance call at a home. Rivera's uh, funeral is underway right now at the famed St. Patrick's Cathedral in Manhattan on Fifth Avenue. But let's start with our coverage out of Houston right now. Our Brian Enton there live with the latest on Thursday's shooting. Brian. Adrian, we are outside the hospital right now where the three Houston officers are recovering. The suspect had an automatic weapon. It was intense gunfire, a shootout between the suspect and the officers. Thankfully, this morning, we are told that all three of the officers are going to be okay. Oh my God, they shooting at it. Oh my God. Terrifying moments in Houston caught on camera as officers and a suspect exchange gunfire following a chase down busy city streets. Three officers hit with bullets in the arm, leg, and foot. After the shootout, the suspect escaped in a stolen car. Officers chased him all the way to his own house. Police say he fired even more shots at a SWAT team, but after a standoff, surrendered peacefully the only peaceful part of this entire situation. What the f These are inherently right now dangerous times. And that was demonstrated again today. We are living in inherently dangerous time. And it's gonna take all of us working together uh, to create and have a very safe city. Houston's police chief commenting on a violent week in Houston for officers. On Sunday, Harris County Sheriff's Deputy Charles Galloway was shot and killed during a traffic stop. The suspect in that shooting has also been arrested after going on the run to Mexico. It's not really a difficult thing. Bad, dangerous people, it's a place for them. And that's in jail. The three Houston police officers shot yesterday were rushed to Memorial Hermann Medical Center. All three injuries described as non-life-threatening. The mayor and police chief say the city is simply too violent and something must be done. No more excuses. Everybody take an active role and get intentional and in doing whatever you can do to fight gun violence in our city.
And the officers we're covering this morning are 35-year-old Officer Gadsden, 32-year-old Officer Hayden, and 28-year-old Officer Alvarez. All were with Houston PD for less than five years. Uh, we are also told that that suspect was shot in the neck and he was in surgery overnight. Adrian. All right, Brian, thank you so much. We are joined right now by Douglas Griffith, president of the Houston Police Officers Union. Officer Griffith, thank you so much uh, for joining us. And we are very sorry to hear what happened to your officers. First off, how are they doing? I mean, we're hearing whatever we've been told officially, but can you give us any more updates on their condition? Yes, ma'am, they're all in good condition. I believe one has left the hospital. The other two are still there. Uh, we just please keep them in your prayers. Uh, they were in good spirits last night when I last talked to them, and I believe they're all going to make a full recovery. What do we know about the suspect? What caused him to actually get into this very bold shootout with police and to flee? This guy should never have been out on the streets. He's been arrested over 15 times. I believe it's something like 12 felonies. He's got more mug shots than he does school photos. That guy needs to be off the streets. He's already shown that he is not going to be a productive member of society. And we need to start holding these people accountable for these type of actions and keep them locked up. What type of charges can he face right now? Uh, we have, th hopefully we're gonna have three attempted murder of a public servant um, and any other charges. He carjacked a poor young lady for her car right there in broad daylight in front of the officers as they were trying to get him in custody. And uh, then we had, he fired another 30 to 40 rounds at the house that he was held up in. So he fired upon our SWAT officers. He fired upon these officers. This guy needs to be placed under the jail. He needs to be gone and, and never see the light of day again. When you uh, see the uptick in crime happening, this was the second shooting involving officers. Uh, the first obviously uh, was not your department, but uh, Mr. Galloway who was killed in an unprovoked situation. He was pulling somebody over for a traffic stop. Uh, and a man actually just gunned him down. What do you think this violence can be attributed to? Well, I can tell you, deputy, uh, the deputy never even, I don't even believe he got a seatbelt off before he was just ambushed by this, I can't even say what he is. He, he should, another one that should not be out there victimizing our citizens. Harris County has a problem and it starts with our courts. We cannot keep people in jail. Our, Officers are doing everything they can out there. Our felony arrests are up, yet they keep turning them out over and over again. It's a problem we're seeing across this country, and we're going to have to find a way to stop it. The Harris County court system is broken. I blame a lot of people here in Harris County, including our commissioner's court, and they, they should do something immediately to get this under control. Yeah, the, a lot of people are for community policing, aware there are different organizations. Uh, of course, the court system that would help in terms of keeping violent offenders and repeat offenders like uh, these two men who are suspects in these cases off the streets. Officer Douglas Griffith, thank you for being with us. Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Now to New York City and the funeral for NYPD officer Jason Rivera, only 22 years old. Family, friends, and other officers gathering right now to honor the rookie. He just recently joined the department. National correspondent Paul Gerke live outside St. Patrick's Cathedral on Fifth Avenue. I would imagine the turnout would have been pretty significant for this funeral. Paul. Earlier in the program, I said there were hundreds of police officers here. There are definitely thousands, Adrian. The snow is falling furiously, setting a somber scene in midtown Manhattan as thousands of uniformed officers line Fifth Avenue in a show of solidarity with fallen officer Jason Rivera. His funeral mass began moments ago behind me at St. Patrick's Cathedral. Cardinal Timothy Dolan is presiding. The mass itself is being broadcast over loudspeakers so the police in attendance on the streets can hear what's going on inside. There was no formal procession to the church this morning. The body of Officer Rivera was left at the altar, surrounded by elaborate flower arrangements, including one shaped like the NYPD shield bearing his badge number, a badge he laid down last Friday. Jason Rivera and his partner Wilbert Mora were ambushed by career criminal LaShawn McNeil inside a Harlem apartment last Friday. Rivera died that night. Mora was on life support until Tuesday. The quick thinking actions of a third officer, Sumit Salan, likely saved lives. Salan returned fire as McNeil tried to escape. McNeil succumbed to his injuries Monday. It is time for us to save our city. 
The deaths of Rivera and Mora have focused national attention on the growing problem of gun violence in New York City. Rivera, who said he joined the force to improve relationships between police and his community, is being remembered as a hero. On Thursday, fellow officers escorted his body from a funeral home in Inwood, the Manhattan neighborhood where Rivera grew up, down to towering St. Patrick's Cathedral in Midtown. Amazing grace echoed through the streets as pallbearers carried Rivera's blue, green, and white flag draped coffin up the church steps to be laid at the altar for a public viewing. When he was a senior, Rivera left a message behind for the freshman class of his high school. His words have found new meaning while New York City grieves his untimely death. I want y'all to, to like, to hear me, hear my voice, and know that, yo, y'all gonna get through it. This is the first of two police funerals here at St. Patrick's Cathedral in the coming days. Officer Wilbert Mora will have his service next Wednesday. Mora was kept alive on life support until Tuesday of this week so his organs could heal from his injuries. He was an organ donor and gave the gift of life to five different recipients, including a relative of his after he passed. Adrian. Thank you so much, Paul, for bringing us that story. We are following some breaking news out of Pittsburgh right now. A snow-covered bridge collapses sending several vehicles into the creek below. At least 10 people are hurt. Investigators just wrapped up a news conference, and Kelsey Kernstein is here with the latest information. Kelsey. Well, Adrian, these are absolutely terrifying pictures that are coming in. We know that this, uh, this bridge collapsed in the East Pittsburgh area. Here's a live look at that bridge right now. News Nation has learned several vehicles were on that bridge at the time, including a bus. And right now there are 10 people who are injured. Three were transported with minor and non-life-threatening injuries. Now you can see the bridge collapsed in multiple areas, brutally cold conditions there in Pittsburgh right now, below freezing temperatures. And we just learned that the last time that bridge was inspected was September of 2021. Take a look at that video there. This is East, East Pittsburgh. The bridge is in a neighborhood called Point Breeze, Pittsburgh. Public safety telling people to avoid the area. There's a strong smell of natural gas in this area. They've cut that gas line for any precautions. The mayor making a statement after arriving at the scene. Take a listen. You know, we were fortunate. The bus went over. And right now we don't have no fatalities. We got three hurt they've been looked at. And I think 10 have been seen and they are, they're okay. Um, so we're just gonna continue to hope for the best and make sure that we get this under, um, get this together. And Red Cross has also been contacted to help the victims in the area. We will continue following this story. We will update you online, on air as well. And this just in, Biden is still planning to make the trip to Pittsburgh where he is expected to discuss infrastructure despite this bridge collapse. Adrian. All right, thank you so much, Kelsey. Uh, that snow, who knows what was waiting down that bridge, but there was a lot of snow on that bridge. Uh, and of course, you're gonna see a lot of snow uh, depending upon where you live. Your national forecast is very cold. A uh, bitter cold affecting much of the country. A bomb cyclone could hit the eastern part of the U.S. this weekend. And we have warnings in effect from North Carolina to Maine. A state of emergency is already in effect in Virginia. Gerard is here with more. It's going to be a very busy weekend. We're seeing lake effect snow here, uh, Adrian, and that is already piling it up here. Nothing to do with the system that's about to hit, and it probably won't even come close to comparison either. All right, so here's what's going on. That cold air has completely taken over much of the country here. Temperatures continuing to fall. The Arctic blast still in place. That front's going to go along and basically interact with the warm Gulf Stream waters off of the coast of uh, off the east coast of the United States. So we're going to see a big system develop. We have plenty of winter weather alerts going on. Winter storm warnings, even blizzard warnings in effect for much of the coastal regions of Massachusetts, Maine, even parts of New Jersey. The blizzard warnings includes the fact that we're going to have very strong winds with this system as well. So let's take you through it. the timing. First of all, it's going to develop starting this morning, but really getting its strength together as we move into uh, late tonight and early tomorrow morning by 1030 a.m. Look at this thing. It is really cranking. And we know that this is going to be a strong system. How strong? Well, we measure storms in terms of pressure here. We're going to see a 35 millibar drop over 24 hours. And when we have 24 millibars or more drop in that 24 hour 
power period, that's where we get the bomb cyclone term from. And that just means it's going to be strong with winds, but also tons of snow just going to be dumped across New England. Boston especially going to be hit. Look at some of the possible snowfall totals. Several feet of snow in Boston. That will put things at a near standstill, if not completely. Providence, Rhode Island, you spread the picture out, we're still going to be seeing significant snowfall totals from New York down towards the edge of uh, Maryland. We're talking about the uh, uh, Chesapeake Bay region. It's going to be quite a mess. And then, of course, the winds on top of that gusting 60 miles an hour. We're going to talk a little bit more about bomb cyclones a little bit. Nick Smith is with me. And Nick, You've uh, learned a few things yourself. Well, because I wasn't afraid to ask you questions, right? <laughs> right, right, right. And so now we're going to break it down a little bit more to people to help them understand this. Absolutely, because it can sound frightening to people at home because meteorologists like Gerard have been talking about these winter storms and how they can have the same wind gust as some Category 1 or 2 hurricanes, upwards of 80 to uh, nearly 100 miles per hour. That is scary. This is what the aftermath of a bomb cyclone can look like. A 2018 bomb cyclone hit Boston, snowed in residents, and completely locked down the city. So first, what is a bomb cyclone, right? It's basically when a cold air mass collides with warm air mass while there are strong jet stream winds above it, which can cause a formation of a rapidly intensifying low pressure system. Now, as Gerard was saying, it's that big temperature difference in the storm that causes that rapid pressure drop, boosting the storm's power. And that force at times can get so strong, they can even form eyes like a hurricane. So a 2021 study found that 7% of all non-tropical low pressure systems were bomb cyclones, the majority of them on the East Coast, which averages to about one a year. These storms are one of the only kind that can bury major cities along that I-95 corridor, like New York and Boston, under feet of snow. Yeah, a lot of shoveling that's going to be done this weekend. Thank you, Nick. Thank you to Gerard, too. Still ahead, News Nation investigates the impact of illegal immigration on American cities. Our team speaks directly with the daily patrols in the neighborhoods and from the sky. Federal officials are also touring the border right now. We'll update you. And Tiger King star Joe Exotic is set to be resentenced today. Sloan. Yes, Adrian, the Netflix reality star was sentenced to 22 years in prison, but there's a chance that number will be reduced. I'll share more next. Okay, could there be a Tiger King 3? People love the Tiger King. All right, we'll be back with more news right after this. Thanks for being with us.